The people overseeing the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have another problem on their hands. Officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company say the levels of radioactivity in a monitoring well near a storage tank have risen. More than 300 tons of highly radioactive water leaked last month out of the storage tank. The water is thought to have seeped into the soil. Managers have assigned more monitors to check for radioactive materials in groundwater near the tank. They say the level of tritium at one of the wells rose on Tuesday to 64,000 becquerels per liter. That's more than twice the reading the previous day. The well is not located near where groundwater is flowing, and managers say most of the tainted soil around the tank has been removed, so they don't know how the water is getting contaminated. Workers plan to pump up clean groundwater and reroute it into the ocean before it passes through reactor buildings, but their latest finding may change that plan. Very powerful, very powerful. You know, you you, know, you can't you can't help but be moved by the by the, the waste of it all. You know, you, the, the the impressions that you get when you when you drive in and you see the area deserted and you begin to look at your dosimeters and you see as you're you know five miles from the plant you're you're beginning to read radiation levels. Uh, just just the waste. It's incredible. The, the um, you know the energy that, that you saw the, these guys going through and you look at the activities that they're performing and it's not producing anything productive it's just all centered around recovery type efforts again an enormous amount of energy for what purpose you know you know you feel you, you can't help but feel empathetic towards them because you know the all the workers were very professional in the sense of, of they were engaged and committed and you could see but you could you could see it in their eyes you could see the sadness you know they very clearly you know as they looked at us they, they very clearly recognized the impact that they've had on that this event has had on the, the you know the locals and the, and the country's economy and you know the world's nuclear power industry as a whole um, you know, it's 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 really a it's really a sad thing, and, and I'll tell you, I mean, you, you could see it, and you could see it in the eyes of the workers. I mean, they're they're committed, they were engaged, they were cordial, they were helpful, they were, you know, they were all, you know, they were even even the guys on breaks, they were very deliberately resting to get back to what they wanted to do, what they needed to do, but but you could just see in their eyes how sad everybody really is. The crisis has made headlines around the world. Now, a French weekly newspaper has carried a caricature mocking the crisis and Japan's winning bid for the 2020 Olympic Games. A cartoon in the satirical Le Cana and Chanet shows two stick-thin sumo wrestlers fighting about. One wrestler has three arms, the other has three legs. Two people in protective gear referee outside the ring. A comment says sumo was picked as an Olympic sport thanks to Fukushima. The editors of the paper said the cartoon expresses surprise that Tokyo is hosting the games even though the plant is not under control. 
but they said the caricature is not intended to hurt Japanese feelings. It's not the first time Fukushima has been the butt of French humor. Public broadcaster France 2 aired a program last year showing Eiji Kawashima, a goalkeeper with Japan's soccer team, with four arms. The presenter of the program blamed the Fukushima accident for the deformities. The Japanese embassy launched a protest, and managers of the TV station apologized. Plans to rebuild breakwaters in three of the hardest-hit prefectures in northeastern Japan are behind schedule. Officials and local municipalities say more than 60 percent of the projects have still not gotten underway. The central and local governments plan to rebuild breakwaters stretching along the Pacific coast from Aomori to Chiba prefectures. The majority of the breakwaters will be in Miyagi, Iwate, and Fukushima prefectures, where 460 projects are planned. But officials say only 4% have been completed. Work on more than 60% of the projects has not even started. Most of the planned breakwaters will be higher than the previous ones, but officials are having trouble getting the approval of local residents. They say the new breakwaters are ugly and would hamper local jobs. Now, the members of the International Olympic Committee have elected Germany's Thomas Bach as their new president. His tenure will include the 2020 Games in Tokyo. Thomas Bach. The IOC members cast their votes in Buenos Aires on Tuesday. Bach won 49 of the 93 votes in the second round of the poll. He was considered the favorite of six candidates. 59-year-old Bach is a lawyer and former fencer. He won a gold medal at the 1976 Montreal Olympics. He joined the IOC in 1991. As a member of the organization's disciplinary commission, he tried to crack down on doping. I want to lead the IOC according to my motto, unity in diversity. I want to be a president for all of you. Bach will serve an initial eight-year term. He succeeded Jacques Roguet, who stepped down after 12 years as president. Well, engineers are trying to generate electricity from an unlikely source. They're hoping to harness the temperature difference between the ocean's warm surface and its cooler deep waters. A group of Japanese researchers are developing the world's first undersea power generator using this technology, and they call it ocean thermal energy conversion. Shipbuilding firm Japan Marine United and Saga University are collaborating on the initiative. They hope to commercialize the system in seven years. The technology uses warm water on the surface of the sea to heat liquid ammonia. The resulting steam rotates a turbine, which generates electricity. The steam then condenses to liquid when cold, deep ocean water is introduced. This method is being touted as a new way to produce renewable energy. Its functioning is not affected by the weather. Officials at the shipbuilding firm say the team has conducted above-ground tests, but that this will be the first undersea experiment of its kind in the world.
。アルゴリズムデモ更新。アルゴリズムデモ更新。リスクは小さく。タッタタッタタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタッタ